From dead serious top secret production elements to more hilariously light-hearted enigmas which the cast have themselves joked about. Those involved with these movies clearly relished keeping a lid on these classified slivers of information, no matter if they leaked out one way or another in the end. So I am Gareth, this is What Culture, and here are 10 movie secrets they didn't want you to know. Number 10. Who played Blofeld from Russia with Love? James Bond's most iconic foe, Ernst Stavro Blofeld, first showed up on screen in 007's second cinematic outing from Russia with Love, where fans glimpsed him briefly as the shadowy, faceless Spectre mastermind referred to as number one. Only Blofeld's hands and the back of his head are shown. And to heighten the intrigue surrounding the character's identity, both the actor who portrayed him on set, Anthony Dawson, and the character's voice actor, Eric Pullman, went uncredited. In the film's end credits, Blofeld's presence is simply credited to question mark. And though Dawson and Pullman return to portray the character in the fourth Bond film, Thunderball, in this instance, the character was entirely absent from the credits. It was only in the next film, You Only Live Twice, that a decidedly more famous actor, the great Donald Pleasance, was cast in the part, without any smoke and mirrors subterfuge. Evidently, Bond producers didn't want audiences to know who was effectively playing Blofeld stand-ins until they'd settled on a name talent to play the part. Who's your favourite Bond villain of all time? Is it Blofeld or somebody else? You let me know in the comments section down below. Number 9. What the Baby Was Made From – Eraserhead David Lynch's Eraserhead is one hell of a trip, and also contains arguably the surrealist filmmaker's single best-kept secret. In the film, protagonist Harry attempts to care for his grotesque mutant child, whose distinct physical appearance immediately left fans wondering precisely where it came from. Lynch has kept mum about confirming the prop's origins, and was reportedly so determined to keep the lid on the matter, that he even had the projectionist blindfolded while queuing up the film's dailies during post-production. That is some commitment. Others have claimed that Lynch even staged a burial for the prop after shooting was finished. The best we've had from Lynch himself on the matter is uneasy, vague comments like it was born nearby, or maybe it was found. While some have theorized the baby, nicknamed Spike on set by Jack Nance, may have been made from a skinned rabbit or lamb fetus. Lovely. This might be possible if Lynch had the animal carcass in barn before shooting, given that he spent a total of five years to complete a Razorhead's production, and even Lynch surely would have balked at using real decomposing remains. Given that we're almost a half century removed from a Razorhead's release without a clear answer, it now seems unlikely we're ever going to know the truth. Number 8. How the Three Seashells Work – Demolition Man There are few cinematic mysteries more agonizing than that of the three seashells in 90s action classic Demolition Man. Early in the movie, as a newly unthawed John Spartan struggles to adapt to the not-so-far-flung future of 2032, he learns that humans have since replaced toilet paper with three seashells. More to the point, rather than explain how the seashells are used, Spartan's colleagues simply express extreme amusement that he doesn't know how to use them, and the film doesn't ever elaborate on this, as has plagued fans for 30 plus years since its release. Though some have come up with their own semi-plausible explanations we won't go into detail on here, those who made the film have remained impressively tight-lipped ever since. Star Sandra Bullock rather vaguely likened it to a B-Day in 2013. But in 2014, one of the film's writers, Daniel Walters, affirmed that he wouldn't reveal how the seashells are used. Granted, it's entirely possible that neither he nor the film's other writers actually know for sure themselves. Either way, the uncertainty is way more fun than a concrete answer ever would be. Number 7. Which Spider-Man wore a fake butt? Spider-Man No Way Home much as Spider-Man No Way Home dropped the veil on literally years of speculation about what the fan-serving multiverse movie would end up being, there's one secret that's still known only by a scarce few members of the production team. In the months following No Way Home's release, star Tom Holland revealed on Late Night with Seth Meyers that one of his fellow Spider-Men, either Andrew Garfield or Tobey Maguire, had a fake posterior built into their Spider-Man costume. Holland wouldn't reveal whether it was Garfield or Maguire though Dick confirmed that he was distracted by the pert shapeliness of said ass. Until he realized it wasn't real. And so, the internet being the internet, 
Everyone, of course, began speculating on which of the two older Spider-Men had their trunk padded by the costume department. For his part, Garfield claimed he didn't receive any extra assistance, though also insisted that Toby's got back, leaving fans none the wiser as to which Spidey had the false bottom. The commotion has largely died down over the last two years, but given that Maguire is the only one of the three actors not to publicly comment on the matter, while also being the eldest of the trio, many naturally believe he's the one with a boosted butt. Over to you, Maguire. Number 6. The Full Recipe for the Practical Trinity Test – Oppenheimer Back when Christopher Nolan first revealed that he was going to show the Trinity nuclear weapon test in Oppenheimer, without the use of CGI, many fans joked that Nolan was just straight up going to film an atomic bomb detonation for real. And while this obviously wasn't ever going to be the case, Nolan and his crew have nevertheless been pretty cagey about revealing the precise practical particulars of how the Trinity sequence was pulled off. In the near year since Oppenheimer's release, we've learned only slivers of how the end result was pieced together. For the practical fireball, a smaller explosion was detonated, with force perspective being used to make it appear appropriately scaled. According to the film's special effects supervisor, Scott Fisher, he concocted a secret recipe to create a fireball which not only generated a fittingly sized cloud, but also let off a distinctive bright flash and fiery red hue. Fisher revealed that the hallowed recipe included gasoline, propane, black powder, aluminum powder, and magnesium flares, though didn't list the whole shebang. Then again, given the possibility that some of Nolan's more industrious fans could try recreating a version of the explosion themselves, a little restraint may actually have been for the best in this case. Cheers for checking out this top secret video today, folks. Hit that subscribe button down below for more what culture in your life. Number 5. Where Michael Myers Went For Four Years – Halloween Ends At the end of Halloween Kills, the second entry into David Gordon Green's Halloween sequel trilogy, Michael Myers kills Laurie Strode's daughter Karen. But when sequel Halloween Ends kicks off four years later, Michael has vanished into thin air. We soon enough learn that Michael is now residing in Haddonfield's sewer system, seemingly in a severely weakened state due to his lack of killing. That begs the question though, what the hell has Michael actually been up to for four years of radio silence? David Gordon Green stated in an interview with Total Film shortly before the film's release that he intentionally decided to withhold this information from the audience, seemingly well aware that there wouldn't be an easy explanation that audiences could take seriously. As he put it, we don't really explain Michael's absence. It's like I don't want to see where Jaws goes to sleep at night when I'm watching a shark movie. I want to see him when he pops up and he's got an appetite. And it's a stance that makes sense. The idea of Michael chilling out in the sewers for so many years, killing the occasional homeless person and eating animals for sustenance is pretty silly. And so the reality of the matter is probably better left uncertain. Number 4. How they pulled off Kung Lao's Fatality – Mortal Kombat 2021 2021's new Mortal Kombat adaptation may not have been a great movie, but it did at least deliver firmly on the promise of serving up a gnarly R-rated gore that Paul W.S. Anderson's PG-13 rated 1995 film did not. And there's no better fatality in the movie than when Kung Lao fights Natara and throws her face first into his spinning bladed hat. The nauseating impact shot shows Natara being slowly cleaved in two from stem to stern revealing her insides all while Lau is showered with the red stuff, much to his satisfaction. It's a visually stunning kill in its own right, enough that many fans wanted to know how the production pulled it off. Yet in an interview with Cinema Blend, Kung Lao actor Max Huang revealed that while the effect was a mix of practical and CGI, he was gagged from giving away the precise intricacies of it. In his words, it was a blend of both, but it was actually more practical than CGI because all the blood you see, that is all real. I can't give away too much, but when we shot the fatality, it was coming at me and it was a mess. Lovely. Number 3. The Final Easter Egg – Guardians of the Galaxy 
For years and years now, James Gunn has teased Marvel Cinematic Universe fans that the original Guardians of the Galaxy contains one final hidden Easter egg that they still haven't figured out. Last year, while discussing Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3, Gunn confirmed on Twitter that the secret remained undiscovered, despite suggesting that fans had partially unearthed it several years ago. Gunn heavily implied that the Easter egg relates to secret messages hidden within the coordinates, which appear every time a planet is named on screen. Yet despite fans making progress, the entirety of that message hasn't yet been uncovered. Though Gunn originally joked about taking the Easter egg to his grave if nobody found it, he's since recanted this, assuring fans that even if the worst happened, many people in his life know what the Easter egg is. All the same, this year marks a full decade without Marvel's rabid fanbase getting to the bottom of the matter, so you can't exactly blame them for losing hope. Number 2. How Paul Giamatti's Lazy Eye Was Achieved – The Holdovers Paul Giamatti gives one of the finest performances of his career in Alexander Payne's Oscar-nominated dramedy The Holdovers, and one of the major traits of his protagonist, Paul Hunnam, apart from stinking of fish, is that he has a lazy eye. Now, Giamatti himself does not have a lazy eye, leaving audiences to ponder precisely how the trick was pulled off. While it was simply a case of deducing whether the lazy eye was a practical effect, or added digitally in post-production, both Giamatti and Payne refused to reveal the truth during the movie's original press tour. In an interview with People last December, Giamatti flat out stated that Payne wouldn't allow him to reveal how the effect was pulled off, calling it a state secret, and vaguely referring to it as movie magic. Yet in recent weeks, with Oscar season nearing its end and everyone desperate to keep their nominated movies in the PR cycle, Giamatti finally dropped the veil. In a Howard Stern interview, Giamatti finally put the matter to rest, confirming that he wore a big soft contact lens, which left him mostly blind in one eye, as proved particularly difficult when shooting scenes where he was required to drive a car. So finally, there it is. Number 1. Who Played Adult Sam in the sequel tease, Uncharted 2022's big-screen adaptation of the hit action-adventure video game series Uncharted concluded with a sequel-teasing scene in which Nathan Drake's older brother Sam is revealed to still be alive, albeit in prison. While the younger version of Sam is played by Rudy Pankow earlier in the movie, we never actually see adult Sam's face, as he's looking down with a healthy mop of hair obscuring his countenance from view. When quizzed about this by IndieWire shortly after Uncharted's release, director Reuben Fleischer flat out refused to reveal who the actor was playing Sam in the scene, saying it's a bit of a mystery, I'm not even sure he's credited. Indeed, no actor is credited as portraying adult Sam, and this is most certainly like the aforementioned Blofeld situation, where the actor in this scene was a mere unknown stand-in, while a more prominent actor will be courted to play the part for real when the sequel finally comes together. Watch this space, folks.